Hey, what's up guys, Alex here. Thank you for checking this video and welcome to another episode about AWPS, the Alicat WordPress starter theme for developers. Welcome again. In this episode, I'm going to show you my technique to manage the callback functions, callback methods, and how to maintain files cleaner and not as convoluted as you will probably get with the default settings API methods of WordPress. So currently we have our store settings page that we uh, dynamically generated with our object oriented programming and we have just one first name uh, just custom field that we can save and everything works nicely as it's supposed to be but if we go back in our source code in the admin page and we take a look of everything that we did you will notice that we have a lot of these callbacks see every time we have a declaration of an admin page sub page custom settings custom field and so on we need to uh, have a callback function WordPress requires a callback functions in order to know what to print and what to do when uh, a value has been passed and uh, you could go with that you could every time having a callback function opening an empty function like a nameless function and then require a file or print in line what you want to print or uh, I don't know even if it's not a good practice echoing in line the field that you want to print but you can see like with just few things with just this few settings here look how many callbacks do we have it's just it's getting kind of like ridiculous and kind of insane so what I want to do I want to show you my method to manage callbacks and something that we can finally do thanks to object oriented programming is splitting callbacks in different files based on their approach based on their purpose so let's get started first of all I want to clean a bunch of things like I want to remove the extra page because I don't want to have these files file getting too big so I'm gonna remove all the things that I did to show you how to create multiple stuff at the same time so if I save I should have just the store page with the settings FAQ and wiki page that's perfect okay now let's start by cleaning up the first callback here we have the uh, get template directory and we're calling the views admin index.php file. This is kind of okay, but I don't like the syntax. I just want to use another file to take care of all the admin and pages and sub pages callback. So in order to do that, I am going to have, if you check the latest updates of AWPS, you're going to have in the API folder, a callback folder with a file called settings callback.php. This is a blank file with already a namespace declare to be reachable with the vendor auto load of composer. And let's use this file to take care of all the admin pages and sub pages callback. So I'm going to rename this file admin pages callback and when we rename the file be sure to rename also the class so admin pages callback and that's perfect so now what we can do we can uh, simply create a callback for uh, um, taking care of printing this stuff so we can uh, simply just copy this function and create here a public static function and let's give it a name for example store admin page and in the store admin page we're gonna simply require like we're doing right now the template into the views admin index.php let's do the same for store FAQ page for now we're gonna not return anything so we're gonna return empty it's gonna print a return and then we're gonna do exactly the same for the store wiki page perfect so uh, actually what we're gonna do let's let's do it exactly that what we're doing here so for the uh, FAQ page we're echoing this stuff so let's copy this echo here and let's put it right here and then for the wiki we're gonna echo 
this other stuff. So we have everything filled up like it's supposed to be here, like we are calling directly in line. So now first, like you already can see how in a simple file, we can manage three different callbacks for three different pages and having a file way shorter than every having everything in the same file all cramped there. It's way more manageable and it's way cleaner to read. It's way easier to read and to identify what we're doing, what we're calling. So now it's time to call this class, initialize this class and use it in our settings API. In order to do it, we can use the magic of namespaces in PHP to refer that unique class. And to refer that unique class that we just generated, let's just simply use in the same way we're using use to call the settings API. I want to use the AWPS API callback and I want to use the admin pages callback. That's perfect. If we go back in our administration panel and we refresh, let's check that everything is okay. There's something that um, most developers don't do. They never go on the actual site and refresh and check if they did something wrong. So I always do that. Uh, every time I write something, I include a method, I call another class or whatever. I, I created it. I have to code a long script. I always check the live site just because I don't want to code many, many lines of code and then having an error and I don't know what the error is coming from. So I just like constantly check if what I'm doing, it's okay, but it's totally totally my thing. It's, it's all right. So the simple thing that we can do is just storing a new instance of this class into a global variable or a variable accessible inside our class and let all the methods inside our class that need a callback call that specific class and referring to the methods that we created here to store the admin page, the FAQ and the, the wiki page. So let's do it. When you have an object oriented programming type of class, you can simply create a public variable call callback or whatever you want to call it. And inside the construct, you can call or reference this callback variable that is going to be equal to a new instance of the admin pages callback. And if we reference a variable, a public variable inside a class, we don't need to put the dollar sign. So if we save it and we refresh our front page or our admin page, nothing changes, of course. But now having this callback, we can uh, use it all around our website, all around our admin class to call properly the methods in these admin pages callback class. So let's scroll down to where we're declaring the settings that the main admin page. And here, instead of calling inline a function, we can simply return an array. This callback variable that is our class access the method that we called store admin page. Save it. Let's go back in our front end. Let's refresh. Still there. Nothing happened. Perfect. And of course, for the first admin sub page that is calling exactly the same view, we can paste the same. We can refer with an array because it, it, through an array is the way you uh, concatenate a new class and say from this new class, check this method inside this class. This is the way WordPress calls for user declare functions. So we're calling the same exact thing. That's perfect. Let's refresh. And again, nothing changed. And now we can do exactly the same for the FAQ page. And here it should be store FAQ and store wiki. That's perfect. So let's call store FAQ. And here let's do exactly the same store wiki. Save. Let's refresh. FAQ, we still have the same thing. And if we want to check, just change in the callback FAQ page, FAQ updated page as the title, just to have confirmation that we're actually calling the proper method. And this is pretty great. Of course, you could ask, why am I doing this? Like, what's the deal? What's the problem of having a nameless function in line if I have to just print a line, if I have to just to include a directory? 
That makes sense, I would say, if you just have to do that. But most of the times, like 99% of the time, every time you have a callback from a method in WordPress, you don't need to just print one line. You don't need to just include something. You need to do more. And that's an example I want to show you now. So if we scroll down and we go into our public settings where we are declaring our settings group here, in the previous lesson, I told you that I avoided to declare a callback function because I don't want to sanitize anything. I don't want to change anything to this but this is a really good example of how a callback function uh, it's really helpful and right now I'm gonna do this I'm gonna declare a callback and I'm gonna specify the usual array and I'm gonna call this the callback that contains the new instance and here I want to call the first name sanitize something like that. And of course, you can call this whatever you want, however you want. So now inside the admin pages callback, I can call a public, I can create a public static function called first name sanitize. Here, because this is a callback, coming from a settings field, this callback will pass automatically an attribute, will pass automatically a variable that contains the input field of our settings group. So in our case, it's the first name, and that's perfect. That's what we wanted, because now we can simply return what I said I was going to do in the past lesson, convert every time the user writes something, sanitize it, clean it up and convert everything with a capitalized word. So an uppercase letter for every initial letter of every word. So first is gonna be UC first is the PHP method to get what I want. And let's check if it works. Let's refresh, go into the settings. Now here, Alex, if I write test or lowercase and if it changes automatically it's going to be uppercase and this is not just a conversion that happens in line this is actually the value that i'm saving in my database is not that i'm just simply applying uc first to print something that it saved actual lowercase everything is printed because we're calling that function during the saving what happens is before saving into the database every edit that i do in the callback will be stored in the database so if i write something different all lowercase i'm gonna have the first one uppercase and of course, if I want uh, every letter, as I said, to be every word to, to, to be uppercase, just capitalize the first one, I can simply change the matter from UC first to UC words. Save it. If I save, there you go. Now everything is stored as I want it. Another thing that you should do, of course, when you deal with this type of uh, input field from the user is to call a built-in method of WordPress called sanitize text field. So if we write sanitize underscore text underscore field and we include our input, we're going to be sure that every time the user writes something, this something, whatever it is, is not going to affect uh, our database. It's not going to be like uh, dangerous for our database. So this section is pretty safe because only a, an admin can write it, but also an admin could write something wrong if it like copy paste from the web and we don't want this to be the case. So what this sanitized text field does, checks for invalid UTF-8, converts all the single characters to entities. So if I write like an HTML, like a href, I don't want these to interfere with anything. If I save, I'm not going to destroy, I'm not going to create issue here. It's not that I left an open tag, this is recognized as an HTML. This gets converted into an HTML entity, uh, so it's not going to affect anything. It strips all the tags. If I use extra tags, it removes the line breaks, tabs, extra white spaces, and uh, it simply just sanitize our input field, and that's perfect. And of course, the last thing that I want to do, I want to just use this to not have this thing, this gigantic callback function to have it in line inside my settings API. I want to create another public static function and let's call it first 
name name input and here no parameters will be passed and here we can just simply do something like get, get the first name and store it into a variable escape the attributes and then get the option that we want so get the option and my option is of course the first name the exact ID that I declare when I created that option and then we can echo exactly what we're echoing here so let's cut this stuff let's paste it here but we don't need to do this in line anymore and we can do first name and here of course as last thing we need to do the exact same thing create an array pass as a first variable our callback instance and then call the name of the function that is first name input that's it let's go back in our admin page let's refresh that's perfect everything is still here nothing changed so if we save it saved amazing everything works um, if you notice now you can see how way cleaner is this file we don't have any more those gigantic inline functions where you have to write everything manually we don't have in any more inline HTML that I personally hate and everything all the callbacks are managed through these other file of course what you can do you could have multiple callbacks to take care of different stuff so these could be just for the admin pages and then you could have another callback file with always these same declaration and the same structure to manage all the inputs or settings fields or sections like you could have separated callback files to manage different callback functions and in order to use them just use the same method use call the uh, name of the class and point it to the right direction where, where this file is and then create a new instance of the class through um, public variable accessible inside your admin class so that's pretty straightforward that's pretty good and it's gonna be way easier to maintain everything and of course as a reference before concluding I want to show you what was the situation before in our sunset theme so if we access the latest lesson that is the 64 inside the ink inside the functions admin look at here this file was kind of okay for a function but we were generating really few things and because of all these callbacks written in line in the way that WordPress wants it we were forced to put all the callbacks inside the same file look how gigantic this file was getting for just like generating and taking care of few fields like six fields seven fields nothing more all the sanitization callbacks or the input callbacks or the pages callbacks that was a gigantic file that can really get out of hands super quickly especially if you have multiple pages with multiple settings and multiple custom fields this is not doable at all this approach in my opinion is way better so it's pretty much it for this video i hope you enjoyed if you did please give it a thumbs up or subscribe to my channel and if you want you can spend a couple of minutes on the support me page of my website where you can find all different ways and methods to support me support my channel and help me to do better videos and better tutorials for you thank you again guys and until the next lesson as usual happy coding